Oh, goody. It's time to get some writing tips from my dear friend and amazing writer, Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. She is the author of this award-winning novel. This was her breakout novel, conceived in my class. There's a whole other YouTube on that. Can't help but say that. <laughs> and this great book of short stories, and she's currently working on a third. So Bonnie Sue knows what she's talking about. So let's ask her a couple of tips for writers, beginning writers, intermediate writers, all kinds of writers. So Bonnie Sue, what would be your favorite writing tips to dispense to writers who are just starting out? Or maybe a writer somewhere in the middle or maybe writers somewhere near the top. But you know, the biggest one that I learned recently is write really early before your critical brain kicks in. I mean, it makes me useless for the rest of the day for anything else, but I, I've been getting up between 4.30 and 5, and I don't even feel like I can actually function at all. And right. I'm forcing myself, you know, to get coffee and then sit down. And I feel like I'm actually writing better. Um, at least this is a first draft trick, you know? Um, yeah. Well, we're all about first drafts. Yeah. I mean, revision is just what it, revision is revision, but first drafts are so underloved and over criticized. And, but yeah. they're, they're the heart of the whole beast, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really what your class is, is like just like it's not about perfect writing, it's about just getting those thoughts out and getting it done. And, and really, I think writers are very self critical. And so that can be a big stumbling block. For me, so you give yourself some coffee. Don't give your inner critic any coffee and just right cracks, right? Yeah. It's I mean, I do think like, you know, mixing it up, your brain is different at different times. And that, which is the next tip, which you do really well is take a hike, <laughs> you know, like don't sit there and try to write if it's not working. I just, that's just right seems basic right but it does feel basic but it we're I think because of school we were taught sit there and suffer you know and you know I remember my first day of school when I was four in Scotland not the nicest school system way back when I was four I was so scared to even ask if I could go to the bathroom because it was such a clearly autocratic kind of situation yeah. I just sat and peed in my chair. <laughs> so don't do that, writers. That's yeah. not going to help. Get up. Go to your composting toilet if you have one, you know. Right, exactly. Toilet. But you're right. Take a hike because the, I think there's scientific evidence about this. And so many writers took walks, right? Dickens walked like 20 miles a day, I think. Virginia Woolf big time writer and uh, walker and writer <laughs> <laughs> that's right and david sedaris and his fitbit you know he writes oh, this right yeah He's yeah always, you need the endorphins you need some perspective well and i think like too if you don't don't have like an ipod and also i mean i have walked with you a lot but if you go by yourself um that's when I think plot really starts to happen and you really work out the the stuff or swimming you know I do that in the pool too swimming those are yeah. just kind of, those are really basic but the, and you're a fiction writer I'm going to interrupt you for a sec because I wrote a memoir and that's true for memoir writers also you can get some real um perspective on yourself there you go there is a book well so this leads me to my next tip which is Try to channel someone you think writes better than you do. Like I, and I keep a stack of my favorites nearby. That's why it was so easy for me to grab this memoir <laughs> right off the shelf. Seriously, so, and I have different ones for different things. Like if I'm writing nonfiction, I, Janet Malcolm. Janet, well, also there's my, there's my grocery list in there. That's how <laughs> close I keep her, but, um, you know, or the Flying Troutmans, Miriam Taves, I think is like a master with dialogue. So when I'm really struggling with dialogue, I'll keep her close by. Right. And, and I just like, it's inspiring to have a stack, but really, so the real master is Lauren Graf in my book. Um, and Talk about permission to really go for it in a paragraph, right? Like right. let it all hang out and really describe it. I mean, she's I mean, such a good yeah. 
of life. And if you're feeling stuck, you know, you just, I just open this up and you could just start reading anywhere. I, you know, I know that people say like, oh, I don't read when I'm writing and it, it intimidates me. I just get inspired. It really, really wow. makes such a huge difference. So, or even just a book of poetry will really help open my mind to the yeah. kind of wonder of the language. Well, that was my last tip. My very last tip was read poetry every day. I mean, if you're writing, well, if you're writing anything, I think poetry is really like the key to unlocking language. Um, right. I, I mean, that would be my very, like if I wake up in the morning, I'm not quite centered. If I read some poetry and, you know, drink some coffee <laughs> and don't overthink it. <laughs> right. Don't yeah. overthink it. Right. That's, that's, that's right. I really agree with you. I think so much of it, especially if you're a smart person who's been smart at being a lawyer or an academic or whatever, and now you want to write, it's like the first thing you have to do is kind of dumb it on down because <laughs> you need to get into the experience of being a living organism in this world, not into the world of conclusions and arguments. You, and, and I feel for people who are super highly educated, I think once you've excelled in the world of, of being told what to do and doing it, learning to write is almost like learning to relax your neck. <laughs> it's a totally different kind of smart, you know, tapping into, I think you have to have a certain level of honesty with yourself and authenticity. And it's not something you learn in a book. You know, it really is about really being in the, in, in the world and living a really deep, authentic life. Right. Know. And realizing that part of a deep, authentic life is falling on your face sometimes. A lot. And not only writing about your victories and the way you shouldn't only remember your victories and you shouldn't only talk about them. That's what intimacy is, is when you share your vulnerability with your friends or family. And that's what good writing is, don't you think? I do. I do. It's scary. Yeah. Of you, yeah. Yourself or your character. And even if you're writing fiction, we're pretty sure the vulnerability of the character has been touched upon by the author at some point in their experience. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. well, that is just, Bonnie Sue, it's so great to see you. And, it's so great uh, to see you. Thanks so oh, yeah. much. Yeah, Those are my tips and tricks, Lise. <laughs> a lot of tips and tricks. Readers and writers, I think I'm going to summarize what we just said in a list right below this video on the oh, YouTube Oh, there you page. go. That's a good idea.